a look at the um, course web page here you can um, see that well lesson number eight is already past the the midpoint since there are 12 12 in um, total and uh, what that actually also means is um, the last tab here uh, is the, the is, is one for the practical assignment now after this lecture number eight you may already want to um, think about do, uh, starting to uh, think about this um, practical assignment because um, in, in fact um, everything up until uh, lesson less this this eight le lesson um, has been building up towards the, doing this practical assignment uh, so you may want want uh, to start reading this this pa page and um, it's now the end of October uh, the deadlines for the course are uh, midway in in December um, so so uh, there is still plenty of time and um, if, if you start looking at this practical assignment now uh, you are for sure going to going to make it in time for those deadlines uh, that all this said uh, of course these following following lessons are important and they will help in in all uh, in many ways but basically after uh, today we have covered everything that is absolutely necessary uh, for you to do this practical assignment and one more more word about the practical assignment well um, the practical assignment is is the is the uh, only assignment that we actually uh, that that you get your grade or um, diploma from this course based on. So it's not the easiest. Um, it is basically um, an assignment where you need to demonstrate that you have yeah, you have um, mastered all the topics we have been covering so far. So it's not the easiest assignment in the, in the world. It's, it's not completed uh, by, by copying ready-made examples, but um, what you have to do is um, um, study the, the given problem and um, produce code that then solves the given problem. So it's not, it's, it's not a trivial task and I don't think it can be done in just one night. So prepare mentally for the final assignment, the practical assignment uh, to be a, a, a larger task that you do have to allocate some time at the end of the course. And now um, at, at, after, after this lesson, you will already have all the tools um, to complete the practical assignment assignment so uh, really i suggest start uh, to start looking at that that practical assignment page already now um, and i will of course keep keep reminding of this practical assignment from now on pretty much or uh, during every single one of our lecture meetings here um, that said now on to the topic at hand with which is going to be working with files. And um, files are important uh, basically for, for a number of reasons. Um, if we remember back to this, this outline that I have shown um, on a couple of occasions, so basic, these basic building blocks that you programming languages usually are comprised of. Um, if you read, you can see we have already covered all these basics. So uh, basically, if we, we have covered all the stuff that usually is associated with, with learning a programming language, and uh, now we already have a pretty good idea of what programming is. Uh, that said, um, of course, we have not, not covered everything there related to programming in in the python python language uh, so basically the remainder of the course is going to be um, all the important stuff that we haven't had a time to discuss yet so all of these core bu building blocks we have um, 
we have covered and now we're we're going to uh, go into subjects that um, that um, extend that knowledge a little bit so this above listing is a general theory based view of the course's content but of course in practice there is a lot of things to cover and that's more or less the uh, what the topics um, at the latter end of the course are going to comprise of. So our topic today is uh, specifically files and how to work with files in, in programming. And uh, to give a little bit of background as to why this is important. So um, in computing, uh, a file system basically just controls how different data, different information is, is stored in, in the, the computer system. So probably you have you have um, at some point thought about what files are, and uh, files it turns out are rather important in the the computing system. So we have these uh, different uh, we have uh, different different kinds of file system organizations. We have different folders inside which we usually put uh, different different files. So this is the way we organize the different different files that we want to save because this represents some kind of hierarchy and uh, well whatever whatever we we um, make this hierarchy like it represents how we how we think and how we want to organize all of these files so uh, these file systems usually usually follow some kind of human thought and uh, traditionally they have been modeled after um, paper-based filing systems using some, some kind of logic. So in a computer system, basically everything is a file, and this, that's why we also have to talk about files on a programming course. So if we didn't have a file system, there would be no set structure to any of the data or information that we, would, uh, that we want um, to process using, using um, our computers. So in practice, uh, the file system is really important because we want to be able to store data. Uh, we want to be able to save information and we want the information to be there uh, even after we have turned the computer off and we, we and then resumed um, our work the next day. And that applies to any sort of data. So on, on the right here, there's an example of a, of a uh, shopping list app on a mobile phone. So if you want to store the shopping list, um, you probably would do it as a, uh, it will probably be stored as a file on your, on your computer or as a file on your smartphone. Likewise, uh, any text document, it's, it's stored as a, as a file. If you're working with Word, then it's a Word file. If you're working with spreadsheets, it could be Excel. All of these are files, or even, even multimedia such as video, if you happen to be storing that. If you happen to be storing multimedia, then uh, those are video files that you're working with. Anyway, the point of this all, um, everything in your, your computer system is, is um, pretty much a file, so that's that's why this is important. Now, in order to understand uh, how a file, how files and file systems work, uh, we need to know a little bit about how data is stored uh, in in PC computers. So basically, what is um, how does data storage work in a in a computer system? So basically, um, long story made very compact. Uh, the key components of every computer system usually revolve around the central processing unit, uh, hard drive, and some some system memory. That's usually called RAM. RAM stands for random access memory. Uh, so. Uh, these three components basically uh, form what, it, what is the backbone of, of all computers, and um, this computer organization has, has pretty much um, stood in place uh, unchanged since the 1950s or maybe 1960s. And um, 
in a computer system, the, the processing unit, CPU, is, is most mostly responsible for running all the different programs. So when you run a program, whether it be uh, Word or Excel or a PowerPoint or a, file, uh, a uh, web browser, um, it, the run, uh, responsibility of running the, the program is with the central processing unit. And that also applies for the programs that we write ourselves using using the Python programming language. Uh, the thing here is that when we are running these programs, no matter what pro what program it is, um, what program it is, it's um, it only saves data while the program is running. So uh, that is, is to say that um, that for example, if, if you store something in your program, such as a, a number in a variable or maybe text in a variable, uh, the number is, is, is stored in uh, this, this system memory, RAM. Uh, but um, RAM happens to be uh, what is called volatile. Now that basically means um, it's not for uh, storing data in, in the long run. So when you turn the computer off, all of that data is lost. So whatever data your, your um, program is handling, once the execution of that program has ended or once you turn the computer off or whatever, uh, all of that data is actually lost. Well, uh, so far we haven't seen any, any practical examples of this because we've only, only um, we, we, we have not even tried to store anything long term, but this just happens to be how, how it works. Um, so if we wanted to store something um, for, a, for a longer time to survive, uh, for example, the reboot of, of a computer, then uh, we would want to save something um, in a file system as a file on the computer's hard drive. So really, if, if um, this um, uh, we, we will not go in, in, into more depth about why it works like this. Uh, we'll just leave it leave it to this big picture and the, the um, note that that this is, this is how um, computers generally work. I do en encourage to find out as this is rather important to understand uh, even for for um, for programming pur purposes. So how computer hardware works is um, important to realize because um, well it has some uh, a, a little bit of consequences that we have to know as programmers. Uh, so anyway so one question that some, sometimes maybe come up is like if this system memory RAM is, is volatile meaning it cannot hold data uh, indefinitely so why don't we store everything on the hard drive if the hard drive can um, store every everything permanently so everything would be more much more secure you don't have to worry about power cuts for example or you wouldn't have to worry about data being lost well the reason here and this is again a, a huge simplification and it ha again has to do with how this computer hardware works in the background but the explanation is efficiency and speed. So it turns out when you need to store something uh, for in the long run, uh, the hard disk is a lot slower than, than what RAM, what system memory can ever be. So in practice, we have to make some sort of compromise between this uh, fast and, and volatile RAM memory and slow and secure uh, file system or hard drive. So this is why, in practice, when we have a computer program and uh, we're we're storing some some data, uh, it it usually stores the data um, 
in the system memory, which is which is fast and volatile. But if we want to make a permanent copy of something, then we need to use the uh, hard drive, the hard disk, the file system. And that's when we need to use files to save data on the hard disk. The practical takeaway from all, all of these, um, if nothing else, that um, files are important. Uh, the other practical takeaway here could be that file systems are actually slow. So um, given this, this um, fact that hard disks are actually pretty slow, uh, you don't want to save files all the time. So for example, you don't want to be saving a file many times every second. You only want to do this occasionally. Um, so that's maybe one one of the practical practical take takeaways from here. So how do files work in practice? So how would we work with a with a file when we're writing program code? So so far we've been working with programs that perform some tasks, but they do not actually save the results uh, anywhere. And um, as discussed in the few previous slides, this is done by storing storing data in a file. Uh, there is a few important things to know about working with files, and um, those two things, or those few things, happen to actually be two things. Um, you have to remember to open a file before using it, and you must remember to close the to close the file after you have used it. Uh, in essence, you would want to treat files as if they were uh, physical notebooks that you might be you, um, might use to make your class notes with. Um, so this physical notebook is a, is a simple ex example and again a bit of a simplification as to how it works. But um, uh, imagine the notebook closed, laying laying on a table, laying in a bookshelf somewhere. So in order for you to use it, in order to write or, or, or write to it or read from it, you have to um, grab it and then um, op open it for, um, to a specific page. After you have opened it, you can you can start reading or writing, whichever it is that you want to do. And after afterwards, you probably want to close it for safekeeping. Uh, so this is, is more or less to illustrate that uh, files work a bit similarly to physical books. You have to open them before using, and at the end, you have to remember to close them as well. Um, in practice, if you forget closing a file, this actually happens fairly frequently. Uh, nothing bad usually happens. Your computer and your operating system will actually make sure that you, uh, the files that you forgot to close uh, do indeed get close, but it's a good practice to remember to close the files that you have opened uh, at the end of, of program code. So a little bit more about what files are in, in practice before um, actually going into the first example of how to do this in practice in, in code. So a file in its bare essence is uh, just a collection of text and uh, in particular it's a collection of lines of text. So as you remember from previously a file, uh, well a, a line of text consists of um, a collection of individual letters. Now a, a file then is a, a, a collection of lines of text. OK, the, of course, there are more complicated files than just these plain text file files, but ultimately all that fi computer files usually contain is uh, at the end just text. It may be uh, in a uh, it may be represented in a format where it's not readable, but all in all, it's, it's just text. Um, something important to remember about a line of text. So a line of text uh, usually ends with a new line character. So um, what you can see, for example, here, um, 
if we take this this fourth line of text here at the end uh, after this this full stop after after this period there is a uh, new line right here and um, this is important because um, a line of text as you can, as you can see here um, in this screenshot really uh, makes it easy for for us as as well as the human readers uh, to interpret this this text so this um, new line at the end or the uh, separating these these different paragraphs with the, with the new line is um, important for us to uh, to read what the structure of this text is and it turns out for text documents um, when we are reading files uh, programmatically using code uh, this holds true as well so each line of text always 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 ends with this this new line and uh, this is going to be important for a couple of reasons uh, that we're going to come back in in just a second um, so in practice in python in in code uh, what you can do with with one of these text files uh, is going to be one uh, one or the other of these so you can just read uh, from the text file one line at a time or you can read all the lines from the beginning to the end in the in the same sitting so you can either just go line by line so uh, line one line two line three line four and just keep going until you meet the end of end of this text file or you can just uh, read everything from from this text file at once and um, store the entire text in a in a variable somewhere in the computer computer's system memory and uh, uh, process it later. So depending on what you're doing, each one of these these um, approaches uh, might might work. In practice, on this course, we're not going to be uh, too uh, doing anything too complicated. So you could use either either way of 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 reading data from a file. The thing to remember here though is uh, usually we read text files uh, in order. So we read them from left to right and from top to bottom. Now why I have uh, highlighted this here is um, or why I have written this note here is that there indeed exists ways uh, to move back and forth while we are reading reading this text file uh, but these are not within the scope of this course so on this course we're, we're only going to be interested in reading a text file from beginning to end and uh, we don't have to go back and forth but indeed there happens to be ways of, of going back and forth um, which are which are going to be in in more uh, we, which would be uh, beneficial in in certain uh, problems but this again outside of the scope of the discussion for today and for this course so now that we have covered a little bit of how um, data is stored in the computer's memory and um, how what do we need to take into account? Let's look at a practical example. So actually what I'm just going to do is uh, move this, this window out of sight and just bring uh, the code editor for us. Here we are. Uh, we want the Python interpreter here. Let's do it this way today. So we, what, what we had in the PowerPoint slide was uh, this um, piece of text that I'm just that we're just going to um, store in a variable called story and um, basically what this what this uh, story holds is um, this uh, little piece of text um, from a podcast that's um, that was broadcast in this fictitious scenario in in Radio Duckburg. So the thing to notice here, it's a uh, long piece of text. I have used the triple quotes here. 
so that I can fit this long piece of text and uh, that has uh, multiple multiple lives, lines e even uh, in, within the same same variable. So uh, triple quotes at the uh, beginning, triple quotes at the end, and um, some lines of text. So this uh, contains a, a new story of, of some kind. So now that we have this story, uh, the next question is um, how might we put this story into uh, or, or this text into a text file and it turns out it's not extremely difficult. So first of all what we have to do is we have to figure out where we have um, where we are storing our uh, Python source code. For me, um, the uh, path to the file is, of course, at the uh, at the top of the of the editor window here. So for me, that's going to be in this um, folder that contains all of these these lecture demos that I am preparing for you. And um, notice that um, this folder right now only consists of of Python files. So it has all these these demos from all of these lectures so far and nothing else and this is going to be important in a in a second so uh, coming back to this um uh, this source code so how would we how do we put this story this text into a um, text file so the first thing to remember is to open a, a file so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable. Let's just call it write file, which is, uh, because this is going to be the file that we are, we are writing in. And the way to op open a file in, in Python is by using a function called open. This function takes two parameters. One of them is going to be uh, the name of the file that we want to open. I am going to call this one news.txt. TXT uh, going to is going to stand for a plain text file. And uh, then I'm going to specify something else as well. So I'm going to be specifying what is uh, the mode in which I want to open this file. And W is going to stand for uh, reading. So Let's document a little bit to open a, a, a file. You, we use uh, the command open. And for open, we're going to specify the file name. And the W stood for write mode. So uh, mode meaning are we, uh, what are we going to do with this file and write mean, meaning we are going to write into this file. We could also be reading from the file, which is going to be in the next example uh, that we're covering. OK, so now that we have uh, opened a file, what do we do next? So uh, if we want to get this piece of text here into the file, which we can access through this variable, write file, we would do uh, we would just say write file dot write and uh, place this variable that contains the story uh, or give it give it to uh, this this write method as a as a parameter and that's basically all that we all that we have to do uh, this code will now write uh, this piece of text into uh, that into this um, uh, text file. Um, the third thing to do here is um, to, to remember to close the file as well. That's done by saying uh, write file dot close right here. Because what we have to do is to remember to close the file after use. Here we are. So if I now run this this piece of code like this, you can see uh, 
well visibly nothing happened here that's because we don't have any prints or inputs here in the code but if we look go back to look at the folder where we had the code we can see that there is now a new document that's uh, called news.txt as we specified here so when we are writing um, to a file we can create um, these these new files if we have specified that we are we are in in writing mode and now what what this news.txt contains well we can take a look uh, we can for example open this using a text editor uh, such as uh, such such as Win windows notepad the notepad is uh, not a particularly good text editor but it will do for for the time being so as you can see this this whole story from beginning to end has been written into this text file the other thing maybe to to point out here um as I said, the, the Windows Notepad is not probably not the best text editor you, you would have. You can obviously use other text editors, but the um, idle editor is also capable of opening, opening uh, text files. Um, so if you go to open and uh, then you specify that you want uh, text files instead of Python files like this, you could open the, the file that we have just written in idle as well. Now, of course, uh, since this is not uh, a source code file, we're not going to be able to run this, but it's just to demonstrate that the files, uh, you, you can open any, any text file in, a, in an, an editor and um, something, something will come up, so you will be, in, be able to inspect the files that you have just written. OK, so that's the first example, how to create a file and how to write something in, a, in, a, in that file. So I'm just going to comment out this, this example and we will move on. OK, so then we move on. So now here in this uh, folder that I have all my, all my uh, important lecture demos I have this file news.txt so the next question is okay what if I wanted to read the contents of this file using uh, using Python well this is going to be uh, the next next example here and again this is not very very difficult it's just a couple of a couple of lines of code so what we're going to do is um, again open, open open a file. So whenever, uh, if you remember the two things to remember, opening and closing a file, opening it before use and closing it after. So we again have to have to start by opening something. That's done with the open function once again. Um, I'm going to specify the name of the file again, that was news.txt. But this time I'm going to specify a different mode of operation here. So now I have specified um, R, which is going to be read mode. So whereas W stood for write, R stands for read. Uh, now the simplest way of reading the context, contents of a file well, um, if you remember I earlier I said that files are a collection of um, lines of text and um, I used those words uh, collection well, I use that word collection for a specific reason. Uh, that's because um, we talked about collections last week, uh, namely lists, and how going through a collection 
the tool for that is going to be a for loop. So it turns out that as um, as files are collections of rows of text, um, then the way to go through a file is by using a for loop. Well, the simplest way to go through a file is by using a for loop. So what we would say is for um, for each individual row in this this file that we are reading, read file, and then we need to do something uh, within this for loop. So we would just uh, for example, print the contents of the of each line. And that's that's it. That's the most simple way of um, reading the contents of a line in, in, in code. And again, the important thing to do at the end is to remember to close the file, uh, the file at the end. Now, if we run this piece of code, let's hope it works. Okay. Here we are. Oh, right. Uh, would I, so um, it seems to work, except that at the end, I um, I misspelled read file. I I spelled read line instead. So that's why the error. Um, came at the end. Let's do that again. So that's read file, not read line. And let's try this again. Here we are. So now you can see how we opened the file. And uh, in this for loop, we print each line of text from this, from this text file, like so. Uh, there is one more way. There is an alternative uh, way of, of reading a file. Uh, this is not very convenient, in my opinion, at least. I think uh, the previous way, the simple way, is, is the um, most elegant. Uh, but um, we could do it instead of a uh, for loop uh, with a while loop instead. Now, this doesn't need a lot of um, uh, the, the method is pretty similar, but we have to do a little bit of scaffolding, scaffolding work to make this um, make this happen. So if we were to try to replace this, so uh, to use a while loop instead of a for loop, what we have to do is um, take the for loop out and um, construct a, a way to do this by hand. So we can also use a while loop and this is if we want to go through each each line uh, manually. So again, this is not uh, this is a way that you can you can uh, see in, in some guides on the internet on how, how to do this. Uh, but again, it's not as, as elegant as the previous one. I would recommend using a for loop each time, but um, just to just as, uh, as an alternative method, uh, we would use a um, while loop like this. In this while loop, we would uh, read uh, individual lines from this this uh, file consisting of, of text. You, this is done by using a uh, method called read line right here. And um, this This um, read line function is funny because it will keep reading the contents of the, of the line uh, or uh, keep reading the contents of the file even when it has um, even when it has reached the end of the file. So uh, when using read line, what you actually need to do, and why I said that this is 
how to go through each line manually. What we have to do is figure out when uh, we have reached the end. And to do that is we have to see uh, when there's no more content in this uh, on this line. So if the length of this row that we just row of text that we just uh, read from the line, uh, if that is going to be zero, then we know uh, that th this is the end of the of the file. And in otherwise, we just print it out. And this should more or less work uh, the same way as the, as the previous example, but you can see it's a little bit more verbose. So from uh, the previous example was just two lines of code to do the for loop. Uh, this is now this is now what six lines of code so it's indeed a little little more uh, complicated but it should work uh, identically as you can see from here just uh, I, I just pressed f5 to run the code and you can see the outcome is is more or less the same OK, so a little bit more about opening and closing the files. So. As I mentioned, it's. Um, important to remember to do that, it's uh, well, unless you remember to open the file, uh, you're going to get an er error regardless of, of what happens. And uh, not closing the file is. Um, well, it's not going to be a disaster but it's bad practice to do that. And also it's not, it's kind of common to forget to close a file at the end because there are very little consequences. The thing about forgetting to close a file is that if there is an error of, of, of some kind uh, that can, it can possibly do something bad to the file that you have just opened. Uh, so that's why it's it's bad form not to remember to do that. Uh, there is actually a, a shortcut, a little bit, uh, a little, a neater way of doing this. That's also uh, a little more, um, a little more pretty. So the the really uh, good way of you using files is is um, as shown here. And um, how this works in practice is um, if we move back here and use the use the uh, for loop instead here we are so we uh, so I just change this back into in, into a for loop because it's a, a little little neater the, this way. Let's check that it still works. It does. OK, so how this uh, way of, of automatically open, opening. A file or automatically closing a file. Well. Um, for this, you can. Um, use something that's called. A uh, with statement, so what you say is with open and um, then you specify the file name news.txt and the uh, read or write mode like that and then you specify the name of the of the variable so in our case read file so what it says now is uh, with with open uh, something news.txt as read file and now whenever we are using uh, notice the colon at the end so what this will do now is um, create a new code block and the idea here is that everything uh, having to do with using this file should be put inside this code block so that it that is to say uh, indenting it um, after this 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 uh, with line. And now basically what happens here is that um, whatever is 
inside this this uh, width block um, all of this opening and closing the file is uh, done automatically by the by the python interpreter so now we can do whatever we want with this with this file and as long as it's inside this this block uh, we don't have to ca care about opening and closing the file manually so if i now run this we should see that this works um, again identically to the previous examples but this is is just a little bit shorter a little bit neater way of doing that of course it it is a bit uh, on the other hand we are getting more complicated as this um, uh, this line adds a little bit of uh, well uh, this line is already a little long and it has these complicated keywords such as with and as but again um, you can choose how to how to do it you can use it you can do it uh, manually by, by using this this open command like this uh, just remember to close the file at the end or you can use you uh, do it uh, using this this new syntax using a a, a with statement and then putting all these all the code inside this this um, code block here either either way of, of working is uh, uh, equally equally good there is no performance or uh, any, uh, there's no difference in performance or anything it's just uh, a matter of um, style and uh, and um, choice okay um, so that's about that uh, that's all about uh, reading and writing in code well almost all uh, let's take a, a second looking at the output of, of this code so the output actually looks something like this uh, if I pull it up here so this is uh, the output that our program has here and um, If we take a look at the if we take a look at the uh, original original um, piece of text which we had had um, here, right? So if we compare these two. Um, not quite like this. Uh, take it here. Okay, so we had this output here, and um, here the original here the original text that we wrote. Okay, so if you compare this original text that we wrote into the file to this output, you can see that this um, looks different. So for example, here, uh, there is a, a new line here. So you can see uh, after uh, Radio Duckburg, there is a line change and we jump to the next line here. If we look at the output, you can see uh, after Radio Duckburg, we do indeed have a line change here, but then we have another new line here. And the same goes on with uh, with uh, the end of this, this um, sentence here. So it's our um, Disney ducks here. Uh, then there's an empty line here and then another new line here after which this next next piece of text uh, be begins and you can see here um, you can see here this sentence is even split uh, by this completely empty line in in between so like this uh, comma prob probably uh, should not uh, 
be here at the end of the end of the line. So these two sentences probably should be joined together, but instead there is a uh, new empty line between them. So you can see this uh, input that we put into the, to, to the file is a little bit different in terms of, of these new lines. Now, this happens for a very good reason. So here we are. So basically, uh, you can see everything here, more or less, is double spaced. So as discussed earlier, each line of text in the text file ends with, with a new line. So each line in the, in the text document ends with a line break. Uh, but if you remember, print, the, the print command also adds a new line at the end of each each line of text. So that's why we are seeing um, a an empty line between between each of these. We're basically effectively getting double spaced text where uh, we only wanted to have a single spaced text. Uh, to look at how this this works, uh, let's see an example. So let's look at how uh, some text is, is printed if we uh, put a new line character manually as if it were uh, in, a, in a text file. So for example, Let's uh, print something quickly here. So here be text and, and let's put a new line manually here. And then I just print um, something else here. And let's see how this how, how what, what this results in. So as you can see, this this new line character here, uh, creates one extra empty line here. Uh, where so this is basically what's happening. So when we are reading text from the text file, uh, there is this this new line character at the end of each line, and then when we put it inside inside this this uh, print function, then it it will effectively create a new a, an empty line in between two existing lines of text. So that's basically what's what's going on here. This often is probably not what we want. So what we would want to do is probably overcome this. Uh, there are two solutions to this. Uh, we can either uh, tell the the print function not to add a new line at the end or we could remove we could remove the new line from uh, the the text document or the new line at the from the end of the line that we just read each of these approaches is equally valid so either one will work for printing the text to the uh, console uh, correctly it's just that the approach is slightly different so if we were to do that, let's um, do that quickly here. So again, uh, let's do that by reading that new story once again, and I'm going to do it with this. With this, uh, I'm going to open the file using this uh, with statement. So the file text file was called news.txt. I'm going to read it. That means uh, read mode and R. And then I'm going to want to use read file as the variable name here. So the first approach, uh, tell the print function not to add a new line at the end. That's fairly simple to do. So again, we want uh, to go through all the rows in this in this read file. So for 
for row in read file, we print each row. And then we specify another parameter for print, which is going to be uh, for which is going to be end. And what end does, it specifies uh, how the print function should uh, end each each line that it prints. And uh, if I just uh, place an empty character there, then it's not going to put a, a new line at the end automatically anymore. Uh, to see if this works, press F5. And now you can see now this is starting to look a bit more like what we wrote in the in, in the file in the beginning. So now there is no more empty lines. Empty lines uh, separating these these lines of text. Uh, the alternative way to do this. Of course, um, is to remove the new line character from the text uh, as we are reading it. Uh, this we could do again, uh, open the file. So that's news.txt. And we want to open it in read mode. And we open this file as a read file. Well, actually, let's use something else. Um, Let's use um, story, for example, as the as the name of the variable that now contains this this text file. Um, so with open news.txt as story, um, then again we read each row in the file. So for sorry, sorry for row in story. And now we again want to print each row, uh, but we want to get rid of the trailing new line character. Uh, so what you can do is you can use this special method called strip. Uh, now what strip does is um, it removes empty spaces, new lines, new lines, uh, white space, white space characters from uh, the beginning and end of, of a string of text. Uh, so, so dot strip removes trail um, trailing white space characters. Here we are. So instead of just printing the row, what we want to do is um, print whatever row.strip returns to us. And again, if we run this code, now there again there is no empty lines between these lines of text. Uh, if you're curious as to how this, this uh, strip works, we could do this alternatively, um, like so. Uh, so we would, uh, let's say we want the cleaned text to be uh, row.strip and then just Then instead of uh, this whole road of strip, we just um, print what, whatever is the cleaned text. So uh, instead of just printing every, uh, printing this directly, uh, we use a intermediary variable where we are storing the cleaned text uh, in between. And this should still work, as you can see it does. Uh, we will come back to what what strip does and how how it works and actually uh, about and, and actually uh, about um, we're going to come back to these special methods that um, uh, strings of texts have, but more on that later. Um, now, so a couple of things to remember about files. So in the previous, we use read file, write file, and in, in one specific example, I used um, story as well. 
and those are all variables. Now, uh, the variables themselves are assigned to point to some file object, which is returned by the open function. So we need the open function to give us a to give us the, the uh, text file that we want to open. And like any variables, the variable itself, do, itself does not do anything on its own. So instead, what they are, um, they are a way to access the file object and to do things like read and write and open or close. So that's important to remember. The actual file file variables do not do anything on their own. You still have to read and write or go through through them in a in a for loop. Uh, depending on what the second parameter to the open open uh, function is, the write uh, the file is opened either in read mode or write mode. So R for read is only for reading, write for uh, W for write is only uh, always for writing and uh, the write mode will always create a new file of the specific name uh, of the name that you specified and it will write over any uh, existing file uh, that has the same name. So this is something to be uh, careful about. So uh, if you are using write mode, it will overwrite any uh, previous, any old file uh, of that name. There is a third option too, which is uh, append, which uh, the shorthand for which is A. And append creates a new file only if there is no existing file of that name. And if there is a, a name of that file already, then it will uh, add the content that you want to write to the file to the end of the existing file. So you might use A as, as the mode as well, but just we be wary of this, of the difference between the uh, different modes in which you can open files. Uh, something else to really remember about uh, about files. So files contains these strings of text. A uh, file contains uh, lines of text. And um, when you read a file, everything inside it is a uh, string of text. Likewise, when you're writing to a file, you must always write uh, text only. If you want to put in some other data type, to, uh, then you have to convert that data to a string first. So for example, if you had numbers, if you had in integer numbers, you can't do that directly. You have to convert the uh, numbers into a string or, or in, into text first using the str uh, function. And uh, to demonstrate how that works, let's take one more example. So again, get rid of this here. So this demonstration it is about uh, writing text and numbers into a file. So let's say we open a uh, text file. to call it data.txt for now and I'm going to open it in write mode. Now what I'm going to do with this file is I'm going to write in it some some um, just some ran random pieces of text and random uh, numbers just to prove that uh, you can only write text in the in the uh, file. So we're going to take the right file and we're going to write something in there. So there is a first first line of text. So I just wrote something in and added a new line character because all lines of text end 
on a new line character, as discussed before. Uh, then maybe let's add a let's add a number here. So as discussed, if we want to add any numbers, we have to first convert them to text using the str function. And again, at the end, we need to um, add a new line. So if we run this program here and take a look at our folder once again, where, where I have this examples, we see a new file has been created. It's called data.txt. I'm just going to open it real quickly in Notepad. And you can see um, You can you can see that indeed it um, did write the contents that I, I wanted wanted there. Uh, you can see I misspelled. Uh, I accidentally wrote uh, backslash d instead of backslash n, and that's why uh, if I go to the end of the end of the file and click here, uh, you can see that there actually isn't a new line at the end of this this line. So the cursor will the blinking cursor right here will only go to the end of, of this line because uh, there isn't uh, a new li new line character at the end here. So let's let's try to fix that. So let's do a new line character here properly and uh, open the file again. Here we are. So we go to open with a notepad. Now you see uh, this has worked properly, so there's just the number 42. And if I go uh, try to move the blinking cursor below, you can see there is there is a new line character. So I am able to get the cursor uh, to the third third row already. So all of these all of these lines indeed do end with a with a new line character. So the new line actually is optional for the last last line but it's good form to to end on a new line character anyway okay so uh the next uh thing was okay so what if we did not uh convert this this number uh 42 into a into text before writing well we can try that we can try just writing this number into this file but if i write but if i run the code now you will see an error because uh, write will not accept anything, uh, any any parameter here, uh, unless it is uh, a piece of text. So now it said uh, write argument must be string, not not an integer. So this uh, the uh, interpreter will not allow you to put any anything else except text here. Uh, once I I change the number. Uh, from an integer num number to text using str, uh, this program will, will once again work and it will stop giving me an error and it will happily write this, this number as long as it is uh, converted into text using str first. Okay, uh, what else? Uh, there are many methods that work with file objects. We have looked at read and write and we briefly looked at read line as well. There are others. We won't be able to cover them uh, during this, this lesson and during this course, but you will be able to find more information on the Python website or, or uh, other places on the internet. So just so you know, there are others, but we just covered this, this few, these open, close, open, close, um, read, write, as they are the most important ones. Uh, you can open multiple files at the same time. Uh, so, for example, if you were to read from one file and write into another one, you can just open uh, the fi both files uh, at the same time. Uh, if you're using with the with open structure, you just place one one with statement inside the other one. Uh,
as the previous examples has shown, the new lines at the end of, of each, the new line character at the end, at the end of each uh, line is quite important in text files because these, these rows of text are what distinguishes uh, them what, what distinguishes the different lines. We recognize one line because, well, it's on its own line. It is, um, it's, it's preceded by a new line character and it's, it's followed by a new line character. And when writing to a file, this all has to be accounted for. So if we take one last, um, last example for, for how to write in, into files to understand them a little bit better. I'm just going to copy this as there is, well, just going to copy this and run it through line by line, this last example. Uh, so we start out with this, with this uh, same story that we began can with so this has not changed it's just this one two three four five lines of, of uh, text that we want to write into a into a text file and then uh, what um, happens if I if I comment out this um, the remainder of the code here and just put it aside for a second um, so then we do something. Uh, we take the story and uh, split it by all these new line characters. So, for example, at the end of this first line, there is a new line here. Uh, there is a new line at the end of the second second line, and so on and so on. So, just to show what this what this uh, lines variable now has print it on the screen just to show what, what there is. So, uh, so what there is is actually, as you can see from these uh, square brackets here, is a, a, a list of things. So what the special function split does, it um, splits a piece of text by some given given uh, character, and in this case, I used the uh, new line character as as something to split it by. So, saying uh, this uh, story dot split, it will find all these new line characters and uh, split it into into a uh, into a collection into a list of individual sentences by those new lines. So as you can see, there is this first element on the list, this, uh, this piece of text, the second element of, on the list is uh, the, the second line and so on and so on. So this is now what's, what's in our, um, in our, in our lines variable here. So, What we would, what we might do then, if we wanted to get these all of these individual lines of text uh, from this lines lines uh, list here. Again, we might open a, open a file, open a text file. So we have this. Uh, let's make it a uh, file called story.txt and we want to open it in, in write mode. And once again, we use a uh, write file as the, as the variable name with which we're going to refer to this file in the code. And then what we say is for uh, each, individual, uh, each individual line in lines, notice how line is different from lines. And uh, then what we say is uh, write file dot write, and what we write in into this this uh, file uh, one line at a time is the line itself plus the new line character. 
because again each line in the in the text file has to end with a line break. Uh, if we run this code now and go to the folder, look at the look at the uh, files again, we can see uh, a file called story.txt has uh, appeared. And if we look inside, we can see uh, there are many lines of text and more importantly each of these lines that we want that we wanted to write they are on their own uh, written each on their own line now the thing here what would happen if we didn't put this new line character at the end of each line so let's remove that and take a look again so if i rerun the code like this and then we go and look at this same same file. So now you can see there is only one line of text. So what this what this program did is it um, it wrote all the text on just one single line. So there is only one one line of text in this entire file in this entire file. Uh, so if we want to go want to see uh, again what happens when we add the new line character backslash n run the code one once more and check out the story right here so open with notepad now we can see the different lines so this is why it's it's important to remember uh, that usually all lines of text uh, end with this with this new line character because it gives some structure to the text uh, and also it, it is there to distinguish the different uh, di different lines uh, of course if you were to want to uh, if you wanted to, you could just write everything on, on one line, no, nothing wrong with that. But um, for getting this, this new line, then it, it will eff effectively just put all the content on the, sa on the same one line. So that's why this, this new line character is important. Okay. Uh, one more note about working with with files and this has to do with working with with um, uh, text so we looked at working uh, different methods of working with text in in uh, what was it um, lesson three but uh, we didn't really cover all of these all of these different methods uh, that uh, strings of text come with so there's actually a bunch of different um, different handy methods that all pieces of text have might um, remove those there yeah uh, so there are these handy methods that each uh, piece of text has inbuilt to them uh, that uh, we haven't yet covered so let's take a look at each of them to see what they do and in order to do this i'm just going to pull up the uh, command line in interpreter here and let's just say uh, see let's just see how how each of these these uh, work well actually let's um, put this how should I organize the screen um, yeah let's put the interpreter here and then we can see the individual methods here on the left right so let's use a uh, piece of text. Uh, I have selected butterscotch in the example. So you can. Uh, so if you have a piece of text, it will automatically come with with some of these methods. These methods we of course saw pre previously uh, when it came 
uh, to a list. So a list had two methods, append and, and remove. Well, it actually uh, it had more, but those were the ones we, we used a lot. And it turns out just simple text has a lot of these, these methods as well. So for example, uh, we can use the uh, capitalize method, so dot capitalize, uh, to create a a word with with a capital capital letter. Uh, similarly, there is a method called upper, which will translate all these these letters in, into uppercase letters. If we were to have were to have a uh, word with only uppercase letters, there is a, a similar method called lower, which turns everything into lowercase again. Mm. There is a special uh, method that tells you if all the characters are uppercase, um, except I just misspelled it, so it's spelled like that. Uh, and there is a corresponding uh, method is lower that tells you if all of the all of the letters in this word are are lowercase as well. Uh, you can also ask if uh, if a word ends with a certain certain letter or or uh, or certain letters. We can we can also ask if. Um, the word or or piece of text uh, starts with some something like that. We can also try to look at um, or find find individual pieces of 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 text in this in this um, string. So. In this case, uh, if we are finding for, uh, if we're looking for scotch in in this word, we get uh, as a result the uh, uh, the number six, which is going to which is the index where this uh, this uh, word that we were looking for starts starts. So because uh, it's preceded by by six previous letters, but of course. Uh, that that's uh, because so these these strings of text are zero indexed, so the first letter is going to be the zeroth. Uh, the second one the second one is going to be uh, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and then the following following index is going to be number six. That's where where you find uh, this this word inside this other other one. We can see if uh, some piece of text contains only number using is, num is numeric. Uh, then there is the interesting interesting function strip which basically uh, more or less strips this this um, string of characters from all the empty or or new line characters that may be at the beginning and at the end of the word. So this is what, how the the uh, strip function that we looked at earlier, well we used earlier in the example, this, this is how it works. We also used an interesting interesting function called split. So let's say we have 
uh, a string of text uh, where we have commas delimiting a uh, number of letters. So we could say we want to split this uh, by the by the comma, and as a result, you will get a a list of all those individual letters. Uh, but um, the, the uh, commas are, are used as the separator for, for that list. Uh, we could use any, any separator here. We could just, uh, if these uh, letters are separated with a, with, with a space, uh, no problem, just uh, use a space as the, as the character that we want to split this, this piece of text with. And it will do the same thing, so you get end up with just the, just the individual letters. And I think the final final one here that we didn't uh, look at yet was replace. Uh, so replace basically does what what it says on the on the label. So if we rep um, if we replace scotch from butterscotch, we, oh yes, so what we need to do is uh, specify what we want to, re what we want to replace and what we want to replace it with. So if we replace scotch with nothing in this word butterscotch, then we should end up with just butter. And those are more, more or less the uh, individual individual um, uh, methods that each uh, di each string in, in, Py in Python comes with. And again, this is something that we didn't cover on, on lesson three because uh, these, these um, methods were a bit uh, alien to, to us, but now that we are working with working with files, we should pro we, we, it, it was time that we, we looked at these because, um, well, working with files is all about working with text, working with strings, because files are just collections of lines of text. Right, that I believe covers the material for today, so I'm just going to